Hi, everybody. So I'll just quickly go over the um, application process and some financial support that's available for both the undergrad PBD program and our master's and PhD. If you could go to the next slide. So for the PBD program, like the title suggests, PBD stands for post baccalaureate diploma. It's meant to be like an add-on to an undergraduate degree. So in order to qualify for the program, you do have to have a, a four-year undergraduate degree from a recognized university. Um, typically, people come to the PBD program with a social sciences uh, undergraduate degree, but that's not a requirement. We have people from business, from English, from all over the map. So even if you haven't done any aging work before, you, um, you can still start. We don't assume that you've done some aging coursework. Uh, you do have to meet SFU's undergraduate admission requirements. Um, and that includes the GPA requirement tends to vary from semester to semester. And in fact, I'd say these days there's a lot of demand. So typically the, the admission GPA is higher, is closer to a 3.0 or a, a B, B plus range. And um, all of the English language requirements and other requirements are outlined on the SFU admissions website. So in the PBD program, we have three intakes a year. There's three semesters in the SFU calendar year. Uh, most people start the program in the fall, but we also admit people for spring and even uh, the summer semester. Uh, I don't encourage people to start in the summer semester typically because we don't offer a lot of courses then. It's mostly um, online courses, whereas in the fall and spring, we have a full roster of course options. So if you're interested in applying to the PBD, we just ask you to submit three letters of reference. There's an application form that you download from the website. And it's kind of a parallel process where you apply to the department, but you also apply for admission to SFU. So in order to apply to the MA program, um, again, you'll need an undergraduate degree. And we do, for the uh, graduate programs, require that you've done a little bit of aging coursework. Um, prerequisite courses, if you haven't done a couple of aging courses, can be done via the PBD program. Um, the, it's, a, it's a little more competitive in order to get into the MA program. In order to get into any program at SFU, you need a GPA of 3.0 or higher. In order to be competitive in our program, typically people need a GPA of at least 3.2 or higher. And again, that, that bar kind of shifts from year to year, depending on who else is applying. And next slide, please. Okay, so in the case of the MA program, there are two intakes per year. The big one is still in the fall. The deadline to apply for that is the end of February and applications are open um, starting in January. We also accept people for the spring semester, which starts in January and the deadline for that is the end of September. So in order to apply to the MA program, I should say um, the, the application process for the MA and PhD is all online. Um, you have to upload your undergraduate and any other post-secondary transcripts online. You also have to prepare a statement of research interest. This is a really um, important part of your application. So we do suggest that you put some time and thought into that. Um, 
One suggestion is to check on our website and see what the faculty areas of research are because in order for someone to supervise you, they need to uh, overlap with your intended research area to some degree so that they can supervise you accordingly. And we also have uh, samples of successful research statements that we're happy to provide just so you have an idea of uh, what we're looking for. Also, we request that you upload um, a statement of, of work experience in gerontology, a CV, including any publications that you may have, and three letters of reference. And of those three, at least a couple should be academic references. Okay, next slide. So for the PhD program, the um, application process is similar. Uh, the, the minimum GPA for a PhD should be 3.5 or higher. Um, typically people have one or two publications on their CV. And again, your research interests should be compatible with um, one of the areas of focus of our faculty. So for the PhD, again, there's two intakes, uh, fall and spring. And you are asked uh, when you start the application process online to submit um, very similar to the MA program all post-secondary transcripts, uh, research interest, work experience, proof of writing ability because you are writing at such a high level, uh, CV, and uh, again, three letters of reference, at least two of which should be uh, academic references. So in terms of um, financial support, I guess the take home message is that there are, there's quite a bit of student funding um, for our students and uh, most of our graduate students, if not all, receive some form of funding, uh, both when they enter and throughout their studies. All of the details are on our website, so I'm not going to go through a list at this point, but I'll just quickly cover um, each category so you have an idea of what the range is. So for the first category, Gerontology Awards, um, we have about 12 awards that are specific to gerontology students. Only gerontology students can apply. They range anywhere from 500 to 2,000, and uh, many are in our endowments that were set up in honor of, of family members that have passed away and um, people just want to help support further studies in aging. The next category is graduate fellowships. Um, when you are admitted to the MA or PhD program, you're eligible for uh, graduate fellowships. Those are worth $7,000. They can be granted at the start of your studies or at any point throughout your studies. Sometimes we grant um, a half fellowship of $3,500. And um, some of these awards, uh, I should say too, are the criteria for them varies. Some of them are merit-based where you need a GPA of 3.5 or higher. Some are, um, particularly some of the PBD, the criteria is more about um, your work in the community and any volunteer work that you do. So uh, you really have to look at the specific terms of reference for each of them. Uh, the next category is student loans and bursaries. So this is a program that's available university-wide. Um, there is a lot of detail on the financial aid and awards uh, website and there are financial advisors available to help you navigate all the different possibilities there. So for graduate entrance scholarships, um, those scholarships are really a tool for us to help recruit top 
uh, graduate students. Um, one example is the Special Graduate Entrance Scholarship, and that's for anywhere from one to $10,000 for one or two terms. Another example is the Graduate Dean's Entrance Scholarship, and that's for exceptional PhD students. And we can grant up to uh, $21,000 per year for one to four years. The idea is really for uh, top graduate students. It gives us the tool because often there's a bit of competition to try to uh, attract uh, real star students. So this gives us the tools to offer them a package that's uh, equivalent to other offers they may be receiving. So the next category is uh, external awards. Uh, those are um, awards that are offered by uh, the federal government. So examples of those are, are SHRC or CIHR awards. So students, graduate students from across the country apply to, the, to those awards, so they're fairly competitive um, and, and merit-based. Uh, you can, however, uh, be granted $35,000 per year so they are quite substantial for up to five years. And I'm proud to say that we have had a number of our graduate students be successful in those highly competitive uh, awards. I seem to have lost the PowerPoint, but that's okay, because we're almost done. Um, the TA, in, in addition to all of the awards I've just listed, there's also uh, employment opportunities available within the department. So um, examples of those are teaching assistant positions. We have one or two per semester where you're helping uh, uh, one of the profs run the course and you're doing a lot of grading and student interaction. Another example is uh, research assistance. This is a, a really interesting employment opportunity for undergraduate PBD students and graduate students. As you heard earlier, a lot of our faculty members are really successful in attracting really interesting research grants and they do hire students as research assistants and there your role can range from coordinating projects, liaising with community partners, doing surveys, meeting with uh, research participants. So it really uh, runs the gamut and gives you a really good idea of, uh, you know, uh, a hands-on look at, at the research that's being conducted and the impacts it's gonna have on the community. 